My guests tonight, both from Los Angeles, the co-host of the internet series Trailer Trash, Michael Coleman, and editor-in-chief of Movie City News, David Poland. Gentlemen, welcome to The Loop. Thanks. Thanks. Nice to be here. Now, it seems like summer blockbusters keep coming out sooner. Michael, why are studios changing their strategy and releasing big films earlier in the year? Well, uh, I think it actually started with X2, if I recall. I think it opened in March 2nd a few years ago, and that pretty much destroyed the whole beginning of summer. You can just start whenever you want. And uh, what with movie, the industry has been whining for years about uh, falling attendance, so I figure they're just spreading out their portfolio, so to speak. Cool. Now, David, are we getting better quality films in spring or just more costly ones? No, we're, not, we're really not getting as much of either. We're getting, still getting a lot of dumps in spring, particularly in April, when it's right before May. May is really the start of the season. But March has a slot. March is definitely a place where you can do two, three $300 million with a movie, 300 being the best example of it. They're trying again with uh, 10,000 B.C. Uh, but pretty much if it's in April and it looks like it may be worthwhile, it's probably crap. Cool. And it kind of started with The Matrix. I mean, The Matrix, the original Matrix film, came out in March. So maybe that sort of... So that was a that com- complete mistake by the on Warner yeah. Brothers case. It cost them probably $100 million in that picture by not having it in the summer. Uh, but they had other movies in the summer they thought were going to be much more important. So yeah, they really didn't quite get that. Well. All right, now yeah. one of the most high-profile films coming out this spring is the new Indiana Jones. Michael, are moviegoers still interested in Indian Company? Is Indy still interested in Little Boys? Uh, oh. Shia LaBeouf, I'd say yes. What, seriously? Have you seen Temple of Doom? Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, as long as I mean, it could be two hours of him making old jokes, and apparently people will go see it. They've been teasing us with it since I think '94 or so. Cool. And now, David, does the threat of the franchise being passed off to Shia LaBeouf worry you at all? Somehow, well, the anything being of, passed off to no, Shia no, LaBeouf but, scares me. But the Avengers of Mutt Williams—that's his character's <laughs> actual name what? in the film—that doesn't really oh. have a ring to and, it. And it sounds like he has a southern accent in the trailers. The thing is, Indiana Jones is the first four quadrant movie of the summer. It, Iron Man will do business. Speed Racer will do business. But it's really Indiana Jones, the first movie that old people and young people and teenagers will all want to go to. And that's why it's probably going to be the biggest movie of the summer. Yeah, and movie geeks and everyone else like us. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Now, this spring also marks the return of the Wachowski brothers with Speed Racer. David, the Wachowskis have a lot riding on this film after the last two suck Matrix movies. <laughs> Can Speed Racer redeem their career? Well, it's not, they don't need their career redeemed. The, third, you know, the second Matrix movie made $800 million worldwide, so they're not exactly suffering. They can do pretty much whatever they want. The thing is, they're looking for kids on this movie, I think. That's the key to this picture. It's not going to be the geeks. It's not going to be the old people. It's going to be kids who are turned on by the images. And as you've seen summer after summer, movies that appeal to younger kids can make $300 million. So that's going to be the key for this picture. Yeah, Transformers, uh, to name exactly. one. Exactly. Now, now, Michael, we got our first look this week at the international trailer for Speed Racer, which shows even more crazy easy visuals in the American yeah. trailer. What's the risk of this film being all style, no substance? Well, it, it's Speed Racer, so I don't think there is any substance to speak of. I mean, right. It's a guy in a car with his, mon- with his monkey, and he's got wait a, a second, Wait a second, are you saying it lacks it's the depth? It's not his monkey, of- it's his brother's monkey. But, but, but wait a second, are you, saying it la- monkey, <laughs> are you saying it lacks the depth of the cartoon? Uh, I, you know, <laughs> if you're going to go that way, I think it is probably 200% more substance right. than the cartoon. They fill in the gaps between the stop motion but, you know, right. as we saw with the Star Wars movies that people didn't like the second run of Star Wars movies, the visuals are enough to get people excited and go back over and over again. If the, mo- if the visuals are cool enough, new enough, fresh enough, people will go. That's okay. what the international trailer was good at. It, uh, it, the first trailer had way too much plot and talking, and the second international <laughs> trailer was just cars, and well, it actually looked better. But, okay, you know, now, that's, now, cars did huge business. That movie, people hated that movie, the, yeah. the Pixar movie, and it did mo- business based on the cars. Cool. Now, the spring wouldn't be the same without superhero movies, and this year we've got both The Incredible Hulk and Iron Man to look forward to. So, David, Iron Man appears to be a fanboy's wet dream. Does the film have the potential to be Marvel's next big franchise after Spider-Man and X-Men? Uh, absolutely not. However, <laughs> the movie's going to open to do at least $150 million because of the slot. That first slot in May, uh, if you have any kind of opening power at all, and Iron Man should open, you're going to do $150 to $200 million. So they're in good shape that way, but it's not. it really isn't that same Daredevil area where it's not Daredevil and Ghost Rider, where it's really not a franchise picture. It's just not that popular comic book. Well, I love well, the comic on book. On the other hand, it actually has uh, good writing and uh, better directing, which is it means weird. nothing, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Michael, Michael I, Iron Man opens a few weeks before The Incredible Hulk. Yeah. We've seen a ton of footage for Iron Man, but the first Hulk trailer doesn't hit until later this week, and there's even word that Marvel and Ed Norton are arguing over the final cut. Should we be worried? Well, I'm, the production didn't even start on the Hulk until about four months after Iron Man, so if you time it out, that's about they're about on schedule. Plus... 
Iron Man comes first. You're go you definitely want people to get excited about that. And once you got that momentum building, then you can uh, pop out the Hulk and be like, we got this too, which also has Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, the thing is the movies are sold based on the trailer, based on the images. Until they have those images out there and we get a reaction from the audience, we have no idea where that movie's going to do business. It, again, it doesn't matter whether it's good. It matters whether it can open. And that's based on the images and whether people get excited about I, it. And it's getting a little late. I've cool. seen I, the I, 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 Yeah, I could talk to you geeks all day. <laughs> I love it. But I want to say thanks to David and Michael for keeping us in the loop. <laughs>